I have with me a guest today. We sit together on uh, on a board of a police charity and uh, we're uh, contemporaries uh, in law enforcement, except that I retired and he is still on the job. Uh, I'm going to have him tell you why that is. Uh, but I want to I want to welcome Detective Sergeant John Kropinski to the show to talk about Police Week, his career and so much more. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ben. It's been looking forward to doing this show for a long time. So, uh, John, how long have you been on the job? This is my 42nd year. August would be 43 if I make it to then. I'm looking to retire, but we'll see. So, John, you don't have any hobbies? What's the deal? I have zero free time. I coach a pro <laughs> hockey team, go skydiving. I was the Connecticut State FOP president for the past eight years. Uh, not a lot of free time here. I got to tell you, John, and I, I so admire that. And that's why I wanted people to meet you. Uh, and I, I'm going to ask you the question I ask every cop on my show. Why did you become a cop? Uh, it was a family business for me. My dad was on a job for 34 years. My brother was on the job. He retired about eight years ago. He had 40 years on the job. Um, I told him I was going to beat him. And when I made it to 41, uh, we had a beer. Uh, it, for me, it was just a family thing. When, when I was six, seven years old, um, you know, other kids were running outdoors to play baseball. I would wait by my dad's car because he was at that time, he was the private duty officer that did the hiring for overtime. And he would go back to work from six to seven every night. If my homework was done, I could go to the police station and hang out. And that was uh, the, the greatest event for me growing up. I love it. Tell folks just a little about what you've done as a cop in those uh, four plus decades. I got to say, I've been pretty lucky. And a lot of people ask me, you know, 40 years, why are you still going to work? And I absolutely love this job. And I've had a pretty good career. Uh, I, I started out, you know, in patrol as everyone else did. From there, I went to the tactical narcotics team, spent some time there. From there, I went to the uh, Special Investigations Division, which is the SIU division. It does 99% uh, is narcotics, but, you know, we'll do gambling, vice, prostitution, human trafficking, um, mob stuff, any, anything that uh, is out there, that unit does. I was lucky enough to get there as a detective. And all throughout this time, uh, I'm the commander of the dive rescue team. I've done that for over 20 years. And I also spent 20 years on SWAT. So pretty much everywhere. The only thing I never got to do that I wanted, always wanted a canine, never made it to that level. Um, but uh, I've been pretty lucky as to, you know, my career. So that was one of the main reasons that I've stayed there. And on the flip side, I've always been able to help the guys, which I've loved. I've been a union rep for 39 years, um, being president of the FOP in Connecticut, when I took over, we had one labor union. We now have 23 in, uh, in the, basically all in the last four years. So I've been very lucky as far as helping other cops. And then obviously, you know what we do with the Wounded Blue? That's probably the highlight, um, taking care of people in need. It's something not everybody does, but everybody should do. And I'm proud of the people that we work with, like yourself. And that's one of the things you do, John, is you give back to people in this profession. And uh, and that's why I knew you were the perfect person to talk about uh, National Police Memorial Week. And, you know, when you and I were well, when you and I were young, young cops, we didn't really have uh, police week. We didn't have the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Wall. Um, can you take through take folks through that evolution of uh, Police Week in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, you know, when 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 I first started and you first started, there was no National Police Week. And then my first trip down there was about 1983 or 84. Um, Police Week, what it they, they formed the uh, memorial and they had started putting the names on. And Police Week in and of itself, for people that have gone now, compared to what it was. My first police week was they had a little, well, they didn't have pop-up tents in them days. You had to put it together, but they had a little 12 by 12 tent set up on a grassy area between the two courthouses in downtown Washington, DC. Underneath that tent, they had one keg of beer, 
with your 1980 red Soho cups. And there was about 200 of us there um, after the ceremonies and stuff. We didn't have, you know, the candlelight vigil and all that in those days. Um, we basically went to the memorial during the day. They had the ceremony at the Capitol. And that was pretty much it in those days. At night, we'd all gather down there. Now, for those that go to Police Week now and see the vendor's booth, which is affectionately known now as Tent City, now we have about 200 some odd booths down there set up at JFK Field. And for those going this year, they are back at JFK again at the stadium. So that is a plus. And they brought back a lot of the original people that were put Police Week on for many, many years. So we're back to the original stuff at the original place. So it should be a good year. But we now have 200 tent vendors that are there from companies worldwide. My first year down there, they had two guys parked on the street, one from NYPD and one from Philadelphia. They opened up their trunks and you could buy, you had your choice that year of vendors. You could buy an NYPD shirt or you could buy a Philadelphia shirt. So that's where it kind of started. Um, in those years, we moved around a lot. We moved from there to the underpass, which was great when we were only doing about four or 5,000 people. They moved to the underpass on 395. They actually closed each end of it. And it was great if it rained because we were in the tunnel. They'd set up a big stage. And we were there for about four or five years till we basically outgrew it. When we got to about... 50, 60 vendors in, in five, 6,000, 7,000 people. We couldn't fit in there anymore. Then a year after that, we left there and we went to uh, what was affectionately called as the Mud Bowl. There was a parking lot that was dug up. It was downtown Washington. We set up a, a stage there. It rained. We were soaked. We were in mud. Um, that was a one-year wonder there. And from there, we moved up to... It was an area at the end of New Jersey Ave. A lot of people will know it, know it by the name of Porta Potty City. They had about 200 Porta Potties around uh, the dance floor and the stage. And that was a tough year. It rained. Um, other staples, I'm not the only staple at Police Week. Vinny and Sal are the original two DJs of Police Week. Uh, they're NYPD cops. And, and they kind of went through the, the evolution with everybody also. You know, those were the guys when I was a young kid, I looked up to, they were up on that stage playing the music and uh, basically making a joy, the guys enjoy themselves. It, one of the things we have to do there, and it, it's important to me and what I love about Kelly's, they give us the leeway to do it, is we're there for the families. And it's a big deal to some of those mothers, brothers, sons and daughters to be able to come on the stage and to play a song and a tribute out to their dad or their husband. And, and that's something that has evolved through the years. John, can you explain to, to uh, citizens that are watching who don't, don't really know what police week is and what our celebration is in Washington, DC, can you kind of walk folks through, through it on the, on the civilian side? Sure. What the civilians would see are two different things. Police week basically is split between daytime events and nighttime remembrance. In the daytime, saddest event you'll ever see is it, whether you're a civilian, a hardcore cop, uh, it's a sad, sad event. You'll see children at the wall. Dad, I got a home run today. Wives talking to husbands, partners talking to the guy who was standing next to them when they were killed. It, it's sad during the day. At night, we put that behind us and we remember our brothers and sisters. Now, there's several different events. Um, one thing that, that I only learned when I became an FOP president that people need. I thought for 20 years ago in there that this event was run by the White House. I had no idea. It's the fraternal order of police that run and host police week. Uh, they're the guys that make this happen. Without them, there would be no police week. It'd just be another day on the calendar. Uh, on the 13th, they'll have a candlelight vigil. 
that what used to back in the past years that used to be done right at the memorial now it's been so it's grown to such where we got 15,000 people there they now go to the lawn um down by the reflecting pools and that's where they host it now um they'll read off every guy's name there'll be some keynote speakers there it, it, it's really a, a nice event if you want to go remember somebody on the 14th they have the national police parade which will start on new jersey avenue and finish at the memorial there will be probably 200 bagpipers there playing it, it's an awesome event old police cars and whatnot on the 15th, and I've been lucky enough to play with the Police Pipes and Drums of Waterbury, where we were the host band, to actually play on the 15th at the Capitol grounds. That's when the families are brought in and the president or his designee will come out and give out the medals to each family member. Wow. I mean, it's, and I, you know, it's such an extraordinary event. And I think it's something that, most citizens, you know, really have never experienced, you know, I mean, we know what it's like from a police uh, perspective, but it is, it is really extraordinary. And it is, I'm, I like the way you describe it because it is one of the saddest things you'll ever see. And yet it, it's one of the biggest celebrations you'll ever go to. I guess it's kind of like an, like an Irish wake because what it's cops a, do, the way that we honor spring break for cops. Right. The way that we honor our fallen is to, to to talk about them and to laugh and to to tell stories and to raise a raise a glass. And uh, and that's why I think it's it's so extraordinary. Um, what are some of your favorite memories of Police Week? Um, well, you know, a lot of people, um, myself and my partner, Phil, we host uh, Kelly's Irish Times for the past 13 years. Um Brendan Kelly and Sean, the owners, awesome. Um, a lot of people have asked me, how did that come about? Kelly's is one of the premier spots that you have to make one night. We're going to be there 12th. We'll, we will open the show on the 12th at about 8 p.m. Get there by 9 because by 10 there'll be a line out the door. Um, there'll be a 1,000 people there. But Kelly's has allowed us to do whatever we want in that place. For four days, the owners have been gracious enough to turn it over to the police. Now, if you go there or you look at, you go online and look at some of the videos on YouTube, there are police, do my, my favorite thing of police week is I can walk into Kelly's on day one on the 12th and there will be car doors, Larry's helmet in the same spot, a hockey stick behind us signed, all of these things from officers who have died in the line of duty that Kelly's keeps locked away for us. And every year they bring them back up. They are on the stage in the same spot. Those families, when they come in, that's the first thing they run over to. They're looking for the mementos from their loved one, as well as sometimes new people who have never been to police week, but have heard they'll come up, sign the door, sign the helmet outside there'll be 20 car doors from officers killed all over the country. And one of the other things that we do at Kelly's that I love is it's international. Mark Roach from Canada. He is the Canadian ambassador. He will be there with, he'll bring Canada in there strong. Australia will be there. Kim will be there. Um, the countries that come every year, we had one shirt year made that was awesome. It said three countries, one brotherhood. It was USA, Canada, and Australia. Mm -hmm. And it really is. We've had guys there from Germany that don't speak a word of English. And they had, they through the translators would say, they had the best time of their life. Because in our business, you don't have to be able to, to speak the language or communicate. Um, simply giving a hug, buying a beer, singing in that. We play three national anthems there. I don't just play the American national anthem. For you, those of you that know me know my, my stand on the national anthem. And we play all three national anthems to respect and honor every country. And if we have another country there that asks for it, I'll download, download it on the spot and play it. 
That's awesome. What do you, what does police week mean to those, those first time families who are going to see that newly engraved name on the memorial wall? What, what have you experienced? It means they're not forgotten. Look, Let's be honest and real, Bets. And you and I deal with this with the Wounded Blue a lot. Chiefs, mayors, governors, when, when an officer is killed in the line of duty, for the first three weeks, everybody's stopping by the house. Everybody's doing what needs to be done. And after a year, and not everybody, there's some great chiefs out there. Please, don't. I'm not painting everybody in the same circle. But I'm saying more often than not, after one year, two years, three years, these families are forgotten. Their, their loved one is forgotten. What most of the people, and these are the people that come every year there. They tell me, Johnny, we're coming home. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. It, it, and it is, I, I, I've i seen that. I've experienced that. Um, we're putting uh, well over 200 uh, new names on the on the wall this year. Um, and it's not just officers that, uh, died in the line of duty the year before the national law enforcement officers, Memorial fund, um, and the FOP, they, they do constant research, don't they? To find, Correct. Um, yeah, talk about that. I have a name minute. submitted from 1972, an officer who died in the line of duty. Um, I was able to get him to PSOB benefits. His family got the money, which was awesome. Uh, I'm trying to get his name on the wall. He ran into a fire in 1972 when he when he breathed in. It burned all of the lungs and his lungs inside. But he didn't die for about 21 years later. So we're trying to get his name. It's constant research. Um, they're very good about helping you out with that kind of stuff. They want to make sure that every name up there now with COVID and also with 9-11 related cancers, a lot of NYPD guys' names are going up there. So it's constant. It's not just uh, the, the 150 to 350 that are killed each year. It could be an additional 80 to 100 guys who have, who have been recognized that they should be there. So when, when we look at the wall, and I would encourage everybody, again, who's never been there, um, you, you see uh, behind John, you see a little bit of what, the the whole landscape looks like there but when you go on and you you look at that wall the marble um it's extraordinary it's beautiful and it's peaceful it's quiet we we've taken our kids there um but we're starting to run out of room aren't we sadly yes um that that was the talk what do we do I, they're talking about raising in that section over there in the back uh, to put like a second level on because we are running out. It's not something they planned on. Something I would highly encourage people to do, going there in the daytime, go there in the daytime, see the children, see the wives. Also go there at night. I love to go there. Usually when Kelly's closed, I'll go there at maybe 3 a.m. in the morning or 4 a.m. if I'm coming back from Chinatown. Um, but they have a midnight piper that will show up there every night during police week and play Amazing Grace at midnight. It's solemn. It's awesome. I would highly encourage people to uh, do that. You and I sit on the board of an organization called the Wounded Blue. And one of the things the Wounded Blue does is provides some of the peer support at Police Week because it is so emotional. And, and really, when you're there as a member of law enforcement or a law enforcement family, nobody understands it better than another law enforcement family member or another law enforcement officer, right? Talk about peer support. Uh, it's the most important thing that really happens during police week. That's why I'm so proud of the wounded blue and working with you working. Randy Sutton is the man during police week of taking care of look for a lot of people. A lot of guys were in shootouts with partners and lost them. So as they return to police week, all the emotions return. Wives, it could be 10 years later, they'll return and the emotions return. All of the emotions of that day will return at police week. And people need help. A um, few years back, I was approached. Uh, I spent most of my career working undercover. I had up on the stage 
guy comes up and says to me, hey, I know you're UC. Can I talk to you? Hey, I got yanked out of the unit and I'm not doing good. I'm really not doing good. Spent a lot of time with him. Um, two years later, he comes back. Hey, guys, everything's good. You know, I really thank you for helping me. I will be the first to admit I am not the person you probably want to talk to for peer support. But I am very lucky to be in a position where I can pick up the phone, call Randy, call Jenny Hill, and I can put people directly in contact with the people that do that is, is a way of life. Um, look, we need help for these people. We don't want any more suicides. And the Wounded Blue is the place to bridge that gap. And for people that are watching, I want to tell you, and look, we all get EAP. I just had a, an incident with a union in EAP. Didn't go well. Uh, EAP, we know that they report back to departments and chiefs. I can tell you, and this is my word of honor, the Wounded Blue is 100% anonymous. When you call us, you don't even have to give us your real name. We can get not only you help, we can get wives help. We can get, if you're having problems maybe with a child whose father or mother were killed, we can get family help. John, uh, as we end here, will you tell people where they can find out more about the Wounded Blue, where they can find more, uh, find out more about Police Week and uh, maybe where they can find uh, more on you? Um, you can reach out to me, John Krapinski, on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm on all those platforms. Uh, the Wounded Blue, for anybody that needs to reach out directly to the Wounded Blue, it is. You can go to thewoundedblue.org online, and that's our website, and we can be reached there also. John, we cannot thank you enough for what you do for American law enforcement, for Police Week, and of course for the Wounded Blue. And if you would like more information about the National Police Association, visit us at nationalpolice.org. Are you passionate about supporting law enforcement? The National Police Association is on a mission to strengthen our communities, protect our families, and ensure justice prevails. But they need your help. Every dollar you donate makes a difference. It funds the legal defense of police officers and police agencies, supports advocacy for pro-law enforcement legislation, and funds community outreach programs and education. Imagine safer streets, stronger bonds between officers and neighborhoods, and a brighter future for all. Join us. Visit our website at nationalpolice.org to donate today.